Thank you, Speaker. I rise on behalf of the Greens to offer our support for the Building Legislation Amendment Bill 2023, a bill that proposes welcome amendments to the Home Building Act 1989, the Building Product Safety Act 2017, the Strata Schemes Management Act 2015, the Building and Development Certifiers Act 2018 and the Design and Building Practitioners Act 2020. Together, these amendments will significantly enhance consumer protections in the building and construction sector, where we know that they have been severely lacking. Right now, as the talk of new supply dominates discussions about alleviating our housing crisis faced by so many in our communities across this state, it is crucially important that we ensure building quality is safeguarded and not compromised in the interests of quantity. We know that consumers have for far too long been left exposed in a building sector that has been mired by scandal, and that if we are to build more homes for our communities in the coming years, these homes must be safe, reliable, and of a high standard. This bill is a welcome step in that right direction toward ensuring the above and is largely based on the findings by the Public Accountability Committee's 2019 report chaired by my former uh, Greens colleague, well, still a Greens colleague, but now a uh, former member of the Upper House, David Tubridge, uh, as an, a report into the further inquiry into the regulation of the building standards. That report was formalised what and formalised and put on the record what so many in the community had already experienced and already knew, that building standards in this state had fallen far short of the mark needed to protect people, that flammable and dangerous cladding is in an alarmingly high use in buildings across New South Wales and that there is a stunning lack of regulation and oversight of the industry by government. Nobody should face financial ruin and housing precarity because of poor or non-compliant workmanship on their new family home. Yet an inadequacy of current regulations within the building and construction industry means that for many, including in my electorate of Newtown, this is sadly the case. Owners in Chippendale's one Central Park complex are facing a multi-million dollar remedi remediation bill for flammable cladding on their building. And in nearby Mascot, Mascot Towers residents still are unable to live in their homes more than three years after they were forced to evacuate when massive structural cracks were found in their basement. I urge the government to step in and support these residents and the many more impacted by these financial and, and economic and, and personal challenges, many of whom are facing dire financial pressures. And in the case of the Mascot Towers, I would urge the government to seriously consider buying back the whole defective block, remediating it, and converting it to much needed public and social housing. We know that that problem is not going to go away. The New South Wales Government and the New South Wales Premier are consistently talking about the need for urgent delivery of supply. That building is sitting there. The government could step in, financially relieve those individuals, remediate the building and turn it into urgently needed public housing in our community. The Greens support the bill's proposed changes to the Building Product Safety Act to require a person in the building product supply chain to ensure the quality of products with which they engage. This obligation would go a long way toward preventing dangerous products like flammable cladding from even entering the market and causing untold devastation and risks to community safety. I'd like to turn now to the bill's introduction of the option for decennial liability insurance as an alternative to strata building bonds or home building compensation. This is a 10-year insurance taken out by the developer of a strata scheme in favour of the owner's corporation to cover costs associated with serious defects and potential collapse of the building after completion. This form of insurance is already in place in a number of other jurisdictions, including France, where it originated, and would provide peace of mind for consumers and an avenue for alleviating the huge financial pressures they face when something goes wrong. Finally, I'd like to turn to the bill's expansion of the powers for the Building Commissioner under the Home Building Act to allow the Building Commissioner to inspect buildings still under construction and intervene without first receiving formal complaint. The bill amends the Building and Development Certifiers Act and Design and Building Practitioners Act to give the Commissioner powers to immediately suspend a building practitioner who is subject to, so, to a show cause notice if the Secretary is satisfied there is or is likely to be a serious public risk, uh, sorry, a serious risk to public safety or consumers if the practitioner is allowed to work pending disciplinary action. 
The Greens wholeheartedly support this expansion of the Commissioner's powers. We know that in the face of deep, pervasive systemic issues, the utility of a Commissioner as a way of providing independent oversight and their ability to actually carry out their remit and deliver their change in order to tackle these kind of complex issues is only possible, though, if they are given the power, independence, resources and support that we are seeing being offered to the Building Commissioner, which we absolutely support. Unfortunately, and on a related note, the much touted appointment of a rental commissioner in New South Wales this, earlier this year is an instructive example of the huge differences and discrepancies between the roles, the independence, the resourcing and the support and powers given to commissioners in this state. It is unclear, based on the appointment of the rental commissioner in comparison to the powers and legislative role of the building commissioner, as to whether the rental commissioner has been provided with an office and resourcing of staff, what kind of budget and the level of independence that is available to the rental commissioner outside of the office of the minister or the department itself. This is not a reflection on the rental commissioner and their role, but rather on the need to be very clear that in providing a position of, of commissioner, we need to be ensuring that there is a robust and independent power provided to that commissioner, powers that mirror the powers delivered for the building commissioner, for the rental commissioner, to recognise the complexity of engaging with a highly fraught industry where people's homes, their livelihoods, their financial status and their financial situation are all at play. Unfortunately and very disappointingly, we are yet to see any movement towards key protections for renters, including an end to no grounds evictions and a freeze or any attempts to control the rising rents in New South Wales. And I would urge the Minister to act to intervene to ensure that the Rental Commissioner has the same level of resourcing of power and independence to be able to deliver on the protections and reforms needed for renters as the building commissioner has been able to do and will continue to do as a result of this legislation. That said, whether it be the building commissioner, the rental commissioner, the, the fair trading commissioner, the ICAT commissioner, the anti-slavery commissioner or any of the other commissioners in the state, it is critical that when we give these commissioners roles and powers that we also deliver them with the appropriate resourcing and supports that they need to carry out their vital work. If we are to boost housing supply in this state, which can I say the Greens absolutely support us doing, provided it includes the boost of public housing supply and genuinely affordable housing supply, we must also ensure that protections for, for consumers and industry regulations keep up with the rate of growth. The Greens support the measures for achieving this proposed in this bill, as well as the raft of enhanced consumer protections that it would deliver, and urge the Minister to consider giving the powers that are currently standing with the Building Commissioner to stand up against dodgy builders and dodgy problems within this sector to the same level of powers and autonomy and independence of the Rental Commissioner to be able to deliver their work, because we believe that it is absolutely crucial that these roles are able to stand independently with power to be able to deliver the kinds of success and reforms that we have seen to date as a result of the work of the building commissioner. And we believe that it is critical that that kind of power is continued with the level of resourcing, independence and the level of support required, including the backing of this parliament to ensure that they are able to do their work in what is an incredibly complex and highly contested housing market.